everybody, we're going to go out to the Baker Haskell Wetlands on 31st Street, and we're anticipating a very good migration, and I'll show you why in just a second. We're t uh, anticipating that next Saturday at the wetlands there's going to be a lot of butterflies, and if we have good weather and a good crowd, I think everybody's going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be able to tag a lot of butterflies. Now, it's easy to get there. Uh, just go out 31st Street. Uh, it's, the event is from 7 in the morning until 1130 in the morning. Uh, we've had two really spectacular times out there where we've had over 500 people. Uh, we issue nets and tags to these people. They go out there and uh, tag the butterflies. We've had those two occasions. Uh, th those groups of people tagged almost 3,000 butterflies in four and a half hours, which is pretty spectacular. Why <laughs> so, landed on your head? Is that right? Well, we'll have to take care of that, won't we? All right, well, what we're going to do is, is tell you a little bit about what the migration is doing and why we expect to see a lot of butterflies next week. Here I have a map, and this map shows where clusters of butterflies have been seen uh, for the last several weeks. And if you look at this map and, and realize that this map is probably one or two days, maybe three days, um, uh, delayed from what the butterflies are actually doing, in other words, they're ahead of this map, uh, the butterflies are really almost on top of us. We're, we're looking at the population, the leading edge of this migration that's moving south is probably only 50 to 75 miles north of us. And so it, it, maybe this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon or the next day, we're going to see a flood of monarch butterflies coming in here. I'll pass this map around so that you can look at it. So in this, in this area, we can expect to see clusters like other people have been reporting north of us. Now when this monarch uh, migration gets here, it's going to continue until about the 4th of October. By the, by the time we get to the 4th of October, most of the monarchs will be gone. So for the first 10 days of this period from about now to the, uh, the 4th of October, we're gonna see a lot of butterflies and that's gonna tail off. Any butterflies that are still flying after the 4th of October have got a very low chance of getting to Mexico. So all these butterflies that are moving through here are moving through in what we call a reproductive diapause. That is to say they are not sexual, they're not gonna be reproducing. Their main goal is to get down to Mexico, to overwinter in Mexico, and then to come back next spring. So what we're doing is tagging these butterflies because it tells us a lot about the changes from one year to the next in terms of where the butterflies come from. Uh, it tells us changes in their population, it tells us something about the mortality, and we're using this information to, uh, to learn a lot about uh, the migration itself. One of the things that, uh, that has come out of this tagging program is being able to predict when the butterflies are going to reach a certain area. They have almost always arrived in Lawrence, Kansas between the 9th and the 11th of September. All right? And I can tell you when they're going to get to Austin, Texas. I can tell you when they're going to get to the Mexican border. And I can tell you when they're going to get to the overwintering site. So the migration turns out to be very predictable. And that's all come out from this tagging program. I learned a lot about the migration from the tagging program. All right, now I'm going to show you the do's and don'ts about catching a butterfly. If you're going to catch a butterfly, or if you're going to get to any insect, what you cannot do is what we want to do. What we want to do is move fast, all right? You want to move fast. You want to get them, right? You want to go get them. Yeah, boom. You want to get them. Well, if you move fast, they're going to see you, all right? We've all had that experience when you want to get that fly that's going to land on your strawberry and peanut butter sandwich, right? And that fly's just crawling, crawling closer and closer to your sandwich. But if you go really fast, the fly's going to fly. You're not going to get it. So what do you do? You've been taught to go very slowly, right? And you get slowly and you get closer and closer to the fly and then you go poof, right? Well, that's exactly how a praying mantis works, right? So if you watch a praying mantis, what a praying mantis does, it sees an insect over here, the praying mantis turns really slowly, right? And the reason the slow works is that insects cannot see things that move slowly. They can see things that move fast, but they can't see things that move slowly because their eyes just aren't designed to see slow movement. They're designed to see fast movement because they're designed to move through the environment very fast. All right? And they have a lot of facets to their eyes, a lot of momentidia. So in order to process this information, uh, some sort of signal has to pro pass a lot of momentidia, a lot of little facets. If it only passes a few facets per second, they don't see it. They, they don't get enough stimuli to actually respond to this movement. So the praying mantis works, turns really slowly, really slowly, and then it goes. Right? So that's how we're going to get a butterfly. All right?
we're going to go really slowly and really slowly and then we're going to catch this butterfly. So what you have to do to catch a butterfly is you come up behind it and below it. <coughs> behind it and below it. Let's see, we got a monarch over here. And I'm going to come up behind it, below it. And you get about a foot, a foot and a half away. And then you pretend you're a praying mantis. And you go like that. <laughs> All right. So now the next trick is that you got to get it in the net like this. All right, you get to stop it flapping its wings, and you get your thumb and forefinger on it on the, from the outside. You got the wings folded over the back, and you reach in with your other fingers, thumb and forefinger, and you grab it on the leading edge of the wings, like this. And these are the two ways to hold a butterfly without really hurting it. Now, there are other ways to do it, but I like to do it these two ways because I can teach it to people really easily, right? So, put your thumb and forefinger, can you do this? Thumb and forefinger right there. Right? You ready to do that? No, you're not ready to do it. You're ready to do it, right? You're ready to do it. All right, now I want you to put your thumb and forefinger right here, and I want you to hold it firmly. Now let's do it that way. Hold it firmly. Now transfer to your other hand, but the leading edge of the wings, okay? But I want you to grab it. No, not like there. I want you to grab it right behind the head. All right, there you go. Now, no, oh, oh, oh. keep it, hold on to the butterfly. So. You hold it this way or this way, and you're not going to hurt this butterfly. You're not going to rub off any scales. And you don't want to do this. You don't want to hold it out here at the, at the edge of the wings. You don't want to hold it in the back there. I mean, you could do things like this. You could do things like that. But then it's hard to do what I want to do with a butterfly, which is to tag, all right? So, but the, what you don't want to do is rub off scales, and what you don't want to do is, is hurt the butterfly in the back of the wings, because this is where it's brittle, and this is where you don't want to break the butterfly. So, now we've got the butterfly, and we have to find out whether it's a boy or a girl. Does anybody know whether this is a boy or a girl? I know it's a boy. No? It's a girl. It's a girl? Why is it a girl? Because it doesn't have any spots. Because it doesn't have a pouch, right? And also it has thicker veins. It has what? Thicker veins. It has thicker veins. Yeah, that's right. All right. So this is a girl butterfly. So that's something we want to keep in mind because we want to write that down on the data sheet. Now, what we want to do is tag this butterfly. And if you look at the center of the hind wing, what you see is that there's a mitten-shaped cell there. We call that the discal cell, all right? That discal cell right here, in the, right, behind the, right behind the head. And that cell right there is where we want to put the tag. And we want to put the tag there because it's not on the distal part of the wing, which will cause the wing to break. All right. So we want to put it where the wing is strong and where it's close to the center lift and center of gravity for the butterfly, so it's not going to impair flight. All right. I'm going to write the tag number down. Okay. Karen is going to write the tag number down. So, so it's NPN. What is it? NPN six five three. Six five three. All right. So we're going to have got that already written down. Now all of these tags are coded. They're coded with three letters and three numbers. And then the idea there is that we can use that code to tell who tagged the butterfly uh, when there's been a recovery. All right, I've just laid the tag on that mitten-shaped cell, all right, like that, right there. Oh, we just put the tag there. Right, and now I'm going to put my thumb, the ball of my thumb, over that tag for just a couple of seconds press on it a little bit, and the reason I do that is that I want the adhesive from the back of the tag to go right through the scales, right to the membrane of the wing. And I want that tag to stay on there, so you have to press on it a little bit. It's a pressure sensitive adhesive. All right, now we've got the butterfly tag. Karen has done it. We've recorded all of the information, right? It's a female. It's a wild female. This is the date. And this is Lawrence, Kansas, all right? Now, now we've got the next thing we got to do. You gotta say goodbye, oh. butterfly. All right. Bye. Now we gotta let it go. Are you gonna help me? Oh. Are you gonna help? Me? Are you ready to hold the butterfly? Mm -hmm. You know. All right. You put right, no, right where the legs are, and then you go one, two, three. There you go. <laughs> there it goes. All right. Okay. Who has questions? Answer any questions about the migration or about what we're doing or why?